In this video, we're going to build a clone of the YouTube Studio app using .NET MAUI. But before we get started, if you like this type of content and would love to see more, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So to begin, we'll create our .NET MAUI project in Visual Studio. To do this, we'll launch Visual Studio, and on the Start page, we'll click the Create a New Project button. On this screen, you can search for the .NET MAUI app template using the search bar. We'll select .NET MAUI app and click Next. Here, we'll name our project and click Next. We'll leave .NET 8.0 selected as the target framework and click the Create button. So we can see that Visual Studio has created our project for us with the default template. Now if we run the app, we should see our image, text, and button, and we can click on the button and the UI gets updated. So all of that's working, and we can stop the application and begin building our clone of the YouTube Studio app. So if we take a look at the YouTube Studio app, which we'll be cloning, we can see that there's a tab bar at the bottom for navigation to other pages in the app. So that's what we'll be adding first. So we'll come over to the Solution Explorer and create a folder for our pages. We'll also create another folder for our view models, as we're going to be using the MVVM pattern for this application. While we're at it, we can also create a folder for our models. Now we can begin adding our different pages. So we'll right click on the pages folder we just created and select add new item and we'll scroll down and select the .NET MAUI content page XAML option. We'll name our page dashboard and click the add button. We'll change the text on the label to dashboard and repeat the process for each of the other pages in the tab bar. Once we're done, we should now have a XAML file and code behind file for the dashboard, content, analytics, comments, and earn pages. Now that we have our pages, we can now tell our app to display the tab bar when the app is launched instead of the default main page. So first, we'll delete the main page.xaml file, and then we'll head over to the app shell.xaml file and remove the shell content element that was pointing to our main page. In its place, we'll add a tab bar, and inside it, we'll add a shell content object for each of our pages. But first, we need to add a XAML namespace for our pages folder. So we'll do that at the top of the file. Now, we can create a shell content, set the title to dashboard, and set the content template to our dashboard page using the data template markup extension. We'll repeat the process for the other pages, so we can just duplicate our shell content multiple times and modify the values. To see what we've done, we can run our app, and we should see the tab bar at the bottom of the screen. We can click on each tab to switch between the pages, and we can confirm that that is working because the text in the label changes. Now if we look again at the YouTube Studio app, we can see that in addition to the text, there are also icons for each tab. Fortunately. Our shell content element allows us to set its icon property, which will then show up in the tab bar. However, we currently do not have the icons in our project, so we'll need to install a NuGet package. So we'll right click on Dependencies and select Manage NuGet Packages. Over on the Browse tab, we'll search for Uranium UI. From the list of results, we select the Uranium UI.icons.materialIcons package and install it. Before we can use the icon fonts, however, we'll need to register them in the create MAUI app method in our MAUI program.cs file. We'll add a using statement for Uranium UI at the top, and then 
we can call the fonts.addMaterialIconFonts method here. With the NuGet package installed and set up, we can now begin using the icons in our app. So, we'll head back to the appshell.xaml page and we'll add this namespace for our material icons at the top. We can set the shell contents icon to a font image source object. We'll set the font family to material regular and set the glyph to the dashboard icon using this syntax. Finally, we'll set the color for the icon using an app theme binding. We'll set it to black for light mode and white for dark mode. We can repeat the process for the other shell content elements in the app shell file. For the others, we'll use the material outlined font family. If we run the app again, we can now see the icons above the title for each tab. So with our tab bar looking good, we'll now focus our attention on the title bar for our app. From our reference, we can see that the title bar has a logo, text, and three toolbar items. We can customize the look of our title bar by setting the title view property on our app shell. So we'll add a grid with six columns using the column definitions property. We'll create the YouTube logo manually and place it in the first column. To do this, we'll add a border and set its background color to red. We'll set its width request to 45 and its height request to 30. We can set its stroke to transparent and give it a stroke shape of round rectangle with a corner radius of 10. Finally, we can give it a padding of 5. If we run the app, we can see the red rectangle with rounded corners. To finish the logo, we'll add the play icon. We can do this easily by adding an image control. We'll set the image source to a font image source. And set the glyph property to the play arrow icon from our material icons library. We'll set the color to white and the font family to material regular. So if we run the app again, we should see our completed logo. Next, we'll add the studio text by adding a label and setting its text property to studio. We'll give it a font size of large and set the font attributes to bold. We'll also set the vertical options to center and give it a margin of 10. To place it in the second column, we'll set the grid.column property to 1. Our third column has a width of star so it can take up the remaining space. We'll now add the toolbar icons in the last three columns. So we'll add an image and set its grid.column property to 3 so it gets placed in the fourth column. We'll give it a horizontal margin of 15 and leave the vertical margin as zero. Then, we'll go ahead and set the image source to a font image source and point to the add circle outline icon from our library. We'll copy and paste the image for the second icon. Change the grid.column to four and change the glyph icon to notifications none. So here's how it looks so far in the app. We'll now add in the last toolbar icon, which is our profile image. So for this, I've added the image to the images folder under the resources folder. To make our image circular, we'll add a border and set its width and height to 30. Then, we'll set its stroke shape to round rectangle and give it a corner radius of 15. We'll set the stroke to transparent, give it a horizontal margin of 15, 
and place it in the last column. And inside our border, we can add an image and set its source property to the file name of our profile image. We'll also set the aspect to fill. So if we run the app, we can see our completed title bar, which now stays the same across the different pages. Our toolbar icons aren't clickable for now, since we just added them as images, but we'll worry about that later on. In the next video, we'll focus on building the UI for our dashboard page. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.